You founded the Machine Intelligence Research Institute, whose unofficial motto is the default consequence of the creation of artificial superintelligence is human extinction. And I'm wondering when the idea of the existential threat of AI for humanity first kind of came onto your radar and whether it was as dramatic a moment as that quote I just gave you. Um, so the general high impact that superhuman intelligence in any form was going to upset the whole human apple cart, the whole world economy apple cart, that it wasn't going to be just another technology or just another nice thing to have. That was 1995, 1996, when I would have been 15 or 16 years old, uh, reading a book by Werner Vinge called True Names and Other Dangers, um, where Vinge mentioned that every science fiction writer's crystal ball or even ability to envision a consistent future breaks down at the point where their scenario has predicted the rise of smarter than human intelligence because they can't write the smarter than human characters. Mm -hmm. If they were actually, if, if you were smart enough to predict exactly where, say, uh, Deep Blue, the ancient world champion artificial chess player, or Stockfish, the modern ch uh, chess player, if you could predict exactly where they would move on a chessboard, you'd be good, that good of a chess player yourself. You just always move where you predicted Stockfish would move. So something smarter than you is unpredictable in its details. And that was Werner Vinge's observation that I came across in 1996, and I was, oh, all right. So transhuman intelligence in any form is the changing of everything, and probably artificial intelligence comes first, though that was just a guess then. A good guess, but a guess nonetheless. I saw that superhuman intelligence was going to be drastically important. I did not then see it as a threat. I thought... If it's smart, it can figure out what the right thing is to do, know the right thing, do the right thing. Um, thought it was going to be like happily ever after. So the point at which I realized that this line of thought was mistaken, that different powerful intelligences could steer to different places, and that the whole elaborate philosophy I'd built up in my mind about intelligence is figuring out the right thing and doing the right thing, uh, that this elaborate philosophy was mistaken, and that moreover, I'd made a, you know, in a way, a teenager's kind of mistake by trying to use that kind of philosophical-ish, high idealistic thinking to make predictions about a universe that didn't run on philosophy deep down. Uh, re realizing that would, I, I'd say, be the moment of, boy, I sure have been stupid. And then went off to try to not have the default thing happen and not have the world end. Werner Vinge, you said was the name? Yeah. And you said that artificial intelligence comes before superintelligence, you think? That superhuman intelligence happens first by way of artificial intelligence getting that smart rather than by human augmentation. This is 1996. In 1996, you don't have nearly human smart or nearly superhuman AI. It's not obvious in 1996 that AI right. is going to go down its track before the like adult gene therapy people get their stuff to the point of augmenting adult human intelligence. Mm -hmm. Humanity could still try to make it happen that uh, you know adult gene therapy for augmenting human intelligence comes first. Uh, but, you know, that would be a big deal intervention, one that I would strongly advocate, but uh, it's not the default. Mm -hmm.